so people often ask me for my advice when it comes to pursuing the self-taught route as a programmer. And I myself am a self-taught programmer. I've been in the industry for five years. So today I've come up with the top five pieces of advice that I want to give for those considering this route. But before we dive into the video, first I want to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, NordVPN. Working from coffee shops is something I really enjoy doing from time to time. However, in the past, I failed to protect my data and privacy whenever browsing over public networks. But with things opening up again, I'll be making sure I'm secure no matter what network I'm on, and this is where NordVPN comes into play. Using NordVPN will give you the peace of mind that your data is encrypted through a secure VPN tunnel, all while hiding your location and IP address. With NordVPN, you can connect up to six devices to ensure that you have full privacy and protection at all times. Personally, I have my laptop, my phone, and my desktop all using NordVPN. Also, I know that my viewers are from all over the world, so if there's ever some geoblocked content in your area, you can choose from one of Nord's 5,000 plus servers in over 50 countries so you can get access to that spicy content. If you're unsatisfied with NordVPN, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. If this sounds interesting to you, make sure you check out the link in the description for a discount off the two year plan or visit nordvpn.com slash Gunderman. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. All right, so for my first piece of advice, you need to understand that being self-taught isn't the easier route by any means. I think a lot of people realize this, but when you choose to become a self-taught dev, you're still gonna have to put in a lot of work, comparable to the amount of work if you were at a coding bootcamp or if you were in college. The difference between college and being self-taught is you can dedicate all your time to learning code and coding principles. As a self-taught programmer, it's gonna be your responsibility to pretty much figure out everything for yourself, and this can be a challenge for a lot of people. People often ask me, can I learn to code and get my first programming job in six months? Or they throw some arbitrary number out there. And I don't think the answer is as straightforward as some people hope it is. The thing is, it's going to completely depend on the amount of effort that you're willing to put in and how fast you pick up on concepts. If you put in the work, I think six months is definitely possible for some people, but don't get too caught up on the timeline. The best way to figure out how long it's going to take you is just by starting, by taking action, which leads me into my next point. Stop overthinking things. In college or a coding bootcamp, you pretty much have it all laid out for you. I mean, you're told what language you're gonna be learning, what tech stacks you're gonna be using, and what projects you're gonna be making. As a self-taught programmer, you don't have the luxury of being told exactly where to start, so you have to figure it out for yourself, and this can be really stressful a lot of the time. You don't really know what language to start with, what tech stack to teach yourself with. You're kind of overloaded with all this different information from all these different resources from various individuals online. But let me let you in on a little secret. It doesn't matter where you start learning. It doesn't matter what your first language is. It doesn't matter what your first tech stack is. Seriously, when you're a seasoned dev, you should be able to hop from one language or one tech stack to another without much of an issue. Sure, there's gonna be an initial learning curve, but it's not like you're starting from square one all over again. You still have those concepts and all those principles behind coding and software development that you learned. And those transfer across most programming languages and most tech stacks. I feel like I've demonstrated the ability to jump from one tech stack to another with some of my most recent videos, such as how I learned Flutter in seven days. Sure, I didn't become an expert on Flutter in seven days, but I was able to quickly pick up on Flutter because of my knowledge with native Android development. The tech stack and the language is just a tool to get you from point A to point B. I've had to learn languages for previous jobs in the past, such as PHP, that I literally don't have any use for today. Was it a waste of time that I picked up on PHP? Absolutely not, because it only sharpened my skills as a programmer. Some people like to say you should start with C or C++ or one of those lower level languages so you understand memory and pointers a little bit better. And I'd say that's generally pretty good advice. Those are great languages to start with, but it's not like if you start with Python, you can't ever go back to learn those lower level languages. For example, I started with Java and then I learned uh, C++. So there's no right or wrong answer here and it doesn't really matter where you start. That's the whole point I'm trying to get at. My next piece of advice, and I think this is probably the most important, at least in terms of finding new opportunities or new jobs, is to network. 
So I do consider myself self-taught, but I did start uh, in college when I graduated high school. And while I was in college, I attended a coding club and I also attended every networking or career fair that my college offered that I was aware of. Anyways, getting your first programming job is definitely the hardest, especially if you're self-taught. And the only reason I got my first internship is because I networked with individuals. Had I not networked and just straight up applied for jobs, it probably would have taken me way longer to get my first uh, coding job or to get my foot in the door somewhere. So try to go out of your way and connect with people. Try to find people locally, find people online, join Discord communities, uh, make a LinkedIn, reach out to recruiters on LinkedIn, and attend tech events and tech conferences. And I get with the current state of the world that it is hard to meet up with people or attend conferences, but in the meantime, try to build up your online presence. And again, try to do some networking virtually somehow. And make a plan for when things do open up so you can attend uh, conferences and tech events in the future. So the job that I'm currently at, I actually met a recruiter at this company at a tech conference that I went to uh, a couple years ago. And when I applied for this job, the recruiter actually reached out to me and they were like, hey, I remember you. And having that connection definitely helped get my resume pushed through and helped me actually land an in-person interview. If you actually have a reference on your application, the chances of you actually getting an interview are so much higher. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there, which leads me to my next point. Don't be afraid to dive into the deep end. If you wait for the right moment to apply for that job, to work on that side project, to attend that tech conference, that moment will never come. Every time I've had a big change in my life, I've never felt like I was 100% ready. When I had my first full-time programming job interview, I felt extremely unqualified and I actually went into that interview with the expectation that I probably wasn't gonna get the job but I did it anyways I dove into the deep end so to speak and it turned out way better than I played it out to be in my head same with networking with individuals I know firsthand how hard it can be to put yourself out there and spark up that conversation but again you just got to take that leap and put yourself in that situation and it gets so much easier the more times you do it and also it never turns out the way you make it out to be in your head. As programmers, we tend to think of all the outcomes in a very logical pattern, and this can be pretty detrimental in social circumstances. So don't think about things too deep in those social situations and just go for it. And for my final piece of advice, you gotta keep it real with yourself. Self-taught may not be for you. If you're dead set on programming as a career, but you keep failing time and time again to sit down and teach yourself or stick to that curriculum, you made for yourself, or you just really struggle with doing this alone, at some point you have to sit yourself down and ask yourself the question, can I do this on my own? And if the answer is no, that's totally okay. For a lot of individuals, going to college or going to a coding bootcamp is the best way to learn. Having that formal structure, having those teachers, those like-minded peers, that curriculum already laid out for you. All those things are great, and at some level, if you're self-taught, you need to kind of emulate these things yourself. For people transitioning out of high school, if you know right away that you wanna become a software developer, I would recommend just going to college and getting that computer science degree. But for individuals who, let's say, already have a degree, maybe it's not a computer science degree, and they wanna make a career change, or just a career change in general, I would really recommend trying to sit down and teaching yourself on your own. And if you really struggle with that, again, there's no shame into going back to college or even enrolling into a coding bootcamp to learn code. If you feel like you're too old, that's a very valid feeling. I actually have a video where I interviewed my dad who transitioned into the programming field and landed his first uh, programming job at the age of 45. He is now 57 years old and he's still writing code. So if you want to hear about how he did it, how he managed to raise a family and go back to college and transition into the programming world later on in his life, you go check out that video. I'll put it up in a card somewhere up here. Anyways, that is my advice for those who are thinking about becoming a self-taught programmer. Being self-taught can be a lonely road, but it doesn't have to be. Make sure you go out of your way to network with individuals don't overthink things, and most importantly, just take action. You're gonna get a lot of things wrong at first, that's totally okay. I mean, it's part of the process of being a dev. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.